first, we start off with what lies beneath. It's been a relatively calm market as we rebound off the December lows, and companies seem to be holding up during earnings season, but it is what is lurking below the surface that could spell trouble ahead. First, the dollar breaking above a key level as global fears loom, plus the 10-year yield teetering at the level that's previously wreaked havoc on Wall Street. Finally, our old friend, Dr. Copper, under pressure, down 20% from highs uh, this year. So even as earnings roll on and volatility seems to be subsiding, are these actually signs that there is trouble ahead for the markets? What do you do? Yes, die? trouble ahead. Yes, did you see yes, the movie, yes. Joyce? Did you see it in the, in the movie theater no. when you were a kid? No, no. you did not. Really? No. I did. It's terrifying. <laughs> and the mar this market to me is terrifying. And I'm sure, by, by the way, BK and Dan, they look like they just got yes. out of Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to see the outfits they have on. It's fantastic. <laughs> With that said. Yes, I think there is trouble beneath. I think the reason why the market tried is a couple reasons. The fact that we went down so quickly, clearly oversold conditions, but the fact that now market participants somehow think the Fed is no longer in play and they hold some sort of hope that there's going to be a deal done with the Chinese. I think the Fed is absolutely still in play, and I don't think there's going to be any deal with the Chinese of any magnitude anytime soon. So in my world, I think you absolutely see a retest of the December 24th low. So I'm probably going to agree with my uh, prison mate over here, mm -hmm. uh, with Guy, because look at what happened today, right? Today there were some really interesting things. You had the European economic news was horrible. France, Italy, European Union, PMIs were just terrible. Not only that, look at what happened to dollar and gold. You saw the dollar rip higher. But of 96 on the Dixie, the dollar index. We know that the dollar is the new VIX. That's a problem for equities. Not only that, you said gold and the dollar rising together, which tells me that people are buying gold because there's political instability. So you name it, you name whatever you want to call it. Political instability, economic slowdown, Brexit. It's a whole potpourri, but it's a problem for the market, and you have to be careful here. Potpourri. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it's a smorgasbord as well. Yes. Okay. I think there's I mean, something for everyone here. I mean, you can, you, you, he's a bear. We've seen the bear suit many times. Yes. There's a lot of things holding up the bear suit, what you said. <laughs> then I look at fundamental earnings. So something like URI, which to me is right in the heart of it. You know, it's almost entirely, not 100%, but almost entirely North America, mainly U.S. And they're telling you things are good. They are not seeing what the market is so afraid of. Their business is good. Their margins are good. I think the valuation is very good, and we're seeing several companies that say that. We're going to get to it later, but with airlines and others, we're seeing a lot of companies saying things are good, even with the shutdown, which everyone it seems to think, I do, will be solved in the nearer term, actually. I think there's, there's stuff to like on a, on, a, on a specific basis, not a monolithic market, right? You can sure. find things where businesses are still really good. What, what you don't like is when things go up too much. Yeah, and I, then I mean, I, you know, let's move over to a cornucopia here of things that might <laughs> oh, nice. take us back down right. towards those prior lows. I mean, listen, you know, uh, this morning on Squawk and Friends, uh, Sorkin had a really good interview <laughs> with the Workday CEO and founder, and they sell, um, they sell you know, SaaS software to enterprises and he was asked a question specifically if all this stuff globally is affecting their business yet are companies pushing out deals that they might do he says it's a little too early to say mm -hmm. but we're getting very close to that so really what i think is most important if you want to focus on the consumer they're still buying stuff you know what guy's going to say about that that to me is a backward looking thing i really care about enterprise spending because to me that's where it's really going to drive capex cycles that's going to drive unemployment right. employment that sort of thing so if we don't have a resolution to our shutdown here if we don't have a resolution to china trade we continue to have the backdrop of weak european data and asia data then corporate spending is going to slow down and then we're going to have a real problem. Bringing it back to the market, I think it's really important to remember that every single time that we have had a downdraft, you know, dating back to 2015, the summer of 2015, first quarter of 2016, there's always been a retest of those pretty dramatic lows. And I'll just bring you back to January 2018 when we were on January 26, the S&P 500 was up 7.5%, okay? About 10 trading later, days later, it was down 10%. Now, I'm just telling you that we obviously tested that one again. There's no reason to think that we will not go back and test that 2,400 level. And that's not all that bad. If it gets out a bunch of the tension, look at the snapback we've had. Yeah. The second time it goes down there, if everything's not as bad as it seems, you're likely to actually have a more constructive rally from there another thing into the poo poo platter of uh, things. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 nice. Pressure's on you, Guy. Marcus Ward, poo poo cornucopia. You so. mentioned yeah. business you spending. We, don't, we will not get data on a lot of this because of the government shutdown. What we are going to get is anecdotes, anecdotes from corporate conference calls. 
anecdotes, even a string of anecdotes, that doesn't mean data. Well, right? I, that we, doesn't necessarily mean data. So we don't get a full picture anyway, which could add to the volatility of not knowing. Right. I mean, obviously, markets don't like that uncertainty. The anecdotes we heard this morning from Davos from almost every single CEO that was interviewed was if the shutdown and the China trade goes on longer than it already has, and we're literally getting within days. I mean, a lot of research has shown if, if most workers go two weeks without or two paycheck cycles without pay, that's a big problem. That's tomorrow. So uh, almost every single CEO, Chuck Robbins from Cisco, all of them saying it's starting to hurt. So this is what concerns me when you had a big rally doesn't doesn't mean you that we have to fall apart but we had a massive rally off the bottom and nothing's changed in the first six minutes of the show we've created somewhat negative wait Pastiche. for it oh you oh well you should I, took the, word, I took the word right out of your head right so, I mean you, you, you took it away from me I had Sorry. it was all building up and you just because you're in my head collage no nah, collage is all not right. nearly as good as no. pastiche but bk will agree with this and i happen to agree with it as well because i'm about to say it the moves to the extent to the move we see in currencies which are extraordinary and bond markets globally in developed countries not least of which our own is disturbing so you could say the equity market doesn't care i would submit an equity market with a 19 vix given the backdrop of currency moves and bond moves should be more like a 25 30 vix which and in my world means the market goes i'll down. add one more thing to the plethora of problems oh, let's wow. talk about european banks and guys deutsche bank a lot of non-performing loans there lots of concern about the european banking system so again for a market that's up off the lows concerning it's funny you know it seems like a lot of volatility over the last year has obviously been trepidation about what the fed's going to do or not going to do when you think about it, you just said you think the fed is very much still in play i we have a chart we have a couple charts of the 10-year look at this level you know when it went through 270 early it went straight almost to 250 and that's a level that people didn't think was going to happen for a very long time look at that that goes back to the taper trench tantrum back in 2013 uh 14 when the last time the 10-year was above three percent you know, we got up there and everyone thought this was going to be a rate that tightening cycle that was going to go on for a bit because we had this economy that was working really well and they could do well together. Look at that. Look where it broke down. It broke down at the prior high and it broke down at the uptrend that had been in place from what people were saying was a generational low in rates. To me, if, the, if they start going lower, that's not going to be good for risk assets. I just can't if see they, a scenario. They the Fed or they take they, the rates? Rates. If rates they go lower. Rate. If that is a substantial resistance right there and we go lower, we break the lows that we made last month or earlier this month, I just don't see that positive for equities, even though it's Is it a it flight to quality, though? Is that what's happening so, as opposed to a rate, you know, So typically, I, I would say yes, but look at it, what happened to the staples today, right? The staples were the worst performing sector. Why were they the worst performing? Because they're heavily indebted. So to me, that's another sign that market participants are starting to say lower rates are not necessarily a good thing. Lower rates are a signal of a weaker economy. Cash flows aren't going to be what they look like. Look, Heavily indebted companies at, can have a problem. But it's at this point in the cycle, right? So we just came off. Fed funds is at two and a quarter percent after 10 years. You know, the last time the S&P topped out, Fed funds was above 5 percent. The time before that, back in 2000, it was above 6 percent. So here we are at two and a quarter. And all those names that they dreamed up back in 2000, 2012, 13, 14 for the next QE and this and that or whatever. Get ready because it's going to be a pasties, a cornucopia, and whatever the heck else you guys were saying because that's what they're going to have a to do to keep this yes. stuff yeah. going. Well, in China, it'll time be out. Mel's calling a timeout. Her mm. first and last. You guys sound so bearish right now. If I were at home, I wouldn't know what uh, to do. Mm. No, seriously. You guys all are so negative on the market. Right. You know, you, I'm you not are, selling. You, yeah. you are seeing the the. I the, see the right. brighter side yes. of things. I mean, I'm, you know. But all the rest oriented. of you. Listen, totally listen, if you told me, Mel, in yeah. one month that we were going to have a substantive trade deal with, chi uh, with China and then we're going to have the then shutdown fix, no, you would have a scenario where you would start to discount some of the weak data that we've seen and you'd say it was co coincident to some of the things. Okay. And then you would have a significant rally in the market. You'd have people start thinking that we are going to have a two and a half, three percent GDP second half of 2019. And you'd buy equities into that. Right. But as long quickly, as we have this going on, as I long as we, we have the shutdown going on, and look, Wilbur Ross, say what you want, but Wilbur Ross made some pretty ridiculous comments today, but I think he spoke the truth when he said the U.S. and China were miles and miles apart in terms of getting a deal done. Larry Kudlow walked that back because that's what this administration does. But I think that his instincts, his being Wilbur Ross's, were correct. I do think we're miles and miles away, which means I don't think the market goes up anytime soon. But, you know, it would be great to have somebody that's been in the market for decades. <laughs> really? It's really seen markets like this before yeah. to be able to drill down in a meaningful way. I wish we had somebody like that.